and welcome to the most anticipated Tuesday edition of the most watched breakfast show in Nigeria. Yes, indeed. It's a new sun rising, a new fresh day, a cool greeting asking you guys to not forget that this is the one place that you can get everything that you need to start your day and forge on with the hustle that is. Don't worry, everything will be fine. We pray and hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's great to have you in our company this morning. You are welcome. See us as your cheerleaders. We always want to see you win in life and in everything that you do. <laughs> that's a cheerleading. Oh, that's the dance. I'm that's, sorry. Uh... <laughs> hey, listen, that's why we're here every single day early, just to give you guys that required support that you need to conquer as you take on each new day. Thank you very much for joining us. You are welcome. Pink lady right here. That's yes, pink, isn't it? Yes, I decided Fuchsia, to... Fuchsia, is it? It's Fuchsia, actually. Fuchsia, okay. Yes, yeah, so I decided to brighten up, you know, your morning. It's not bad. All bright and, you know. That's good. Grand. Good. Yeah, thank you. What a way to start your day. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much, is. Amen, for, uh, well, brighten up our day. Yes. What can I say? Yeah, we have so much in store for you guys. So we want you to please stick around. My name is M.M. Emil Koche. And my name is Mazino Appeal. Of course, you guys know you can watch the show live on GoTV Channel 16 and UHF Channel 49. And of course, you can stream the show live at tvcentertainment.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Please do not forget to send in your comments using the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. Don't forget now, okay? We also have an app, by the way, you guys can always download, whether it's iOS or Google Play Store. It's available for you guys. Download it and carry us with you anywhere that you want to go across the world, in fact, at your convenience. Of course. Let's let you in on what we have on the show today. We begin this show with health discussion. And Dr. Sharon, of course, will be joining us to share some health tips. But hey, um, I think she comes on later on. But hey, while we are standing by for that, we have a musical this performance later on. Um, and with us, we have Danny Roy. He'll be thrilling us later on. For our first conversation we have young filmmaker, the winner of the best short film category for this year's AMVCA's Adeoye Adetunji. He'll be joining us to talk about his film titled Pa Aramire. Finally, former Big Brother Africa housemate Akintai Ofaniro will be joining us on the couch to share his journey with us. Can't wait for that discussion. Wasn't he in that movie? Yes, he's yes, the one. He, oh, cool. Of course, from one of the biggest oh. movies of 2023. Oh, yeah, Mr. Mike, good morning, man. Good morning, to have you here. You know, I love this Mike. color you're wearing. Thank you. You have told me I have a shirt with the same color combination. Good, have been twinning, Mike. Yeah, Mike, you and Fusha Pink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. I like. I do have one. Pink actually. is actually originally I had you know medieval times. Yeah, it used to be a male color. Mm. But we just uh, want to commiserate with. Uh, the, fa uh, the Doc Pesci family? Yeah, Doc Pesci family and AIT family mm -hmm. and friends. It just came in yesterday, 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 yesterday evening. Yes, yes. Uh, it hit me hard, you know, they are in the same profession that we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, from people who have met with him, who know him and say he's a, he was a very committed man, committed to his business and, uh, you know, was a good man. And uh, we pray for the repose of his soul. Yeah. Quite sad. Speaking yeah. of him, the media would not be the same thing in Nigeria but, yeah. because I think his involvement um, changed the trajectory of how it uh, is now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he yeah. will be missed. Definitely. He will be. He will be. An icon. He will be. Definitely. Uh, but then uh, we are gearing, we were gearing up for quite, for, for quite a lot coming up. Uh, we'll talk about much more. Yesterday, mm. of course, was inauguration. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's a brand new day, right? It is. Hopefully, Abuja people will stop complaining about the traffic now. But did you see the Abuja airport? I saw <laughs> and the but pictures the airport, from so it. I saw a picture and someone was like, ah, look how Tabuja has turned to. And you need to see what it was. It was really for miles long. For, uh, miles. for It was very long traffic and they're like, ah, like, come see, come there were There were private jets for days at the mm. airport mm -hmm. with everybody mm. who flew in for the we airport. Yeah, but then in, exactly. it is expected. It's the inauguration. Yeah, People exactly. are going to be coming in from all corners of the world mm -hmm. exactly. for this. And it's a new dispensation. So, um, yeah. We're excited. I hope you are as well. Good morning. The news on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Mike Messikeno. We begin with the inauguration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the sixth democratically elected president, where cheers and celebration filled the year. Nigerians yesterday heard, uh, the, of course, uh, the speech in the 
one day, the speech from the president uh, during his inauguration, he promised massive economic reforms and also improved security. He made a bold declaration about Nigeria's unity and sovereignty, indicating the country will exist as long as the world exists. TVC News correspondents were at Eagle Square venue of the inauguration report. Democracy thrives when the rule of law is obeyed and there are checks and balances among the three arms of government. Since 1999, Nigeria has had a peaceful transition from one democratically elected president to another. The inauguration ceremony to usher in Bola Tinubu as president was the seventh scheduled public inauguration conducted by Chief Chief Justices of Nigeria. Section 146, subsection 2 of the Constitution and Section 10 of the Old Act says the oath of office shall be administered by the Chief Justice of Nigeria. In 1999, President Olusha Gunobasanjo was sworn in by Justice Mohamed Owais. In 2003, when President Obasanjo won the re election, he was sworn in by Justice Kasina Alu. In 2007, President Musa Yaradua was sworn in by Justice Idris Kutigi. In 2011, President Goodluck Jonathan was sworn in by Justice Mahmoud Mohamed when he was elected after completing the term of Musa Yaradua. Who died in office. In 2015, President Muhammad Buhari was sworn in by Justice Walter Anoy. When President Buhari won the re election, he was sworn in by Justice Tanko Mohammed. Today, the oath of allegiance and the oath of office was administered to Balak Sinibu by Justice Olukayo de Ariwala. Do solemnly swear that you have been faithful and bear through allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The swearing in ceremony would have been performed by Justice Tanko Mohammed had he not resigned from office in 2022. I, Kashim do solemnly swear. The vice president elect is sworn in before the president, a matter of practice and norm. Section 141 of the Constitution says there shall be the federation of the vice president. Having their wives standing beside them is a case of culture and tradition in a constitutional democracy. The oath of office is contained in the sixth schedule of the Constitution and second schedule of the Oath Act. Section 5A of the Oath Act spells out how the oath of office is taken. If the person be sworn in is a Christian, he would hold in his right hand a copy of the Holy Bible or the New Testament. If he is a Muslim, he places both hands on the Quran. If he is a Jew, he would hold in his uplifted hand a copy of the Old Testament. The inauguration ceremony of the President of Nigeria takes place after every four years to mark the commencement of a new president. Founder of Dar Communications, owners of Africa Independent Television and Raypar FM, Chief Raymond Dokpesi is dead. His death was announced on Monday in a statement signed by his son, Raymond Dokpesi Jr. The statement read, and I quote, it is with deep sadness and heavy heart that we announce the passing of High Chief Raymond Aleogo Anthony Dokbesi Ezomo of Wekbawano Kingdom, who passed away on May 29, 2023. High Chief Dokbesi was a beloved husband, father, grandfather, and friend to many. He will be deeply missed by all who knew him. End quote. According to Mr. Dokbesi Jr., High Chief Raymond Dokwesi was an accomplished businessman, a pioneer in the Nigerian media industry, and a philanthropist who dedicated, dedicated his life to the service of his country and his community. He says his legacy will live on through the impact he made on the lives of many. Now onto foreign news. Russian missiles have hit Ukraine's capital, Kiev, following two nights of heavy drone strikes. They were all reportedly shot down and there are no reports of casualties. Flaming debris from the intercepted missiles landed in residential areas in central Kyiv. Russia has launched 16 air attacks on the Ukrainian capital this month. The latest, however, was unusual because it took place during the day and seemed to be targeted at the city center. Air Force spokesman Yuri Inhat said that Iksander ballistic missiles were used in the latest attack and that it was possible S-300 and S-400 missiles had also been fired. According to reports, only one person was injured and all missiles were destroyed by Ukrainian air defenses. 
Russian authorities claimed all their targets had been hit. And that's it on the news and sports. We'll take a breather. Stay with us. The show is getting on. You're welcome. It's time for What's Up and About. Let's say good morning to Mary. Yay. Good morning. It's welcome. good to be here. It's good, good to be good, here. Good. So we've got something to talk about here. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations to, um, uh, what's his name, uh, AY, the comedian mm -hmm. who was also conferred with national honor from mm -hmm. only yesterday and everything. Uh, there's plenty of talk that has happened. It wasn't just him, about 300 Nigerians mm -hmm. were given yeah. these honors, these mm -hmm. national honors, but it kind of like raised a bit of here and there, especially regarding certain notable Nigerians or um, well, people who are uh, in the public eye, Sheon Kuti for one. Mm -hmm. He did not think that it was appropriate for persons such as AY to mm. have received that award because he says, like, uh, well, if you're criticizing a government, why take an honor from the same government? But there are very many ways to look at this and very many preferences to see. Mike was talking about this this morning. Mike, what was that you were telling? No, oh, okay, so uh, there are many ways I've looked at it at different times. And um, it comes to, you, what do we call it? National. National honor. <laughs> National. So... Mm -hmm. Um, that means that it it, it takes over. It, it's not is not dependent on whoever is sitting, Governance. the president or whoever. Although it it's up to the discretion mm. of the president mm -hmm. to give these awards, and then there's some people who we think should receive them mm. and don't receive, and then some we think are not qualified enough. But at the base level, for every single award, it is contribution to national development. Mm -hmm. That is what the base criteria exactly. for awards of these honors. Mm -hmm. Have these people contributed to national development? I would say most of them, yes. And the reason we're talking about this is that this time there's quite a number of people in the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. from yeah, exactly. AY to mm -hmm. David Doe and all of that. And I had mentioned about how these people have, uh, you know, uh, they, they have, as our stock internationally has risen. Mm -hmm. I mean, AY now has some um, a feature on Netflix. Mm -hmm. David Doe with his recent album, mm -hmm broke records in what over over a hundred countries where the, the album charted mm -hmm. and so these are reasons that nigerians are being seen in a good light so for mm -hmm. them yes but then the issue of uh, should this should i take this award depending on who gave me that's a personal thing mm -hmm. we know i, I, I want to read ay's um submission on social media he says those of you shaming or asking me to reject a national honor mm -hmm. in quote are clearly missing a vital point. Our country is bigger and more important than any president or political party awarding it. A national honor is the highest recognition anyone can get for his or her contribution to national building. And therein is the point, mm -hmm. that I've contributed this much to the country. If I'm being rewarded for it, should I not take it because of the person handing me the plaque mm. or so and mm -hmm. so? That's the question now. A couple of people have rejected it, however. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Wole Shwenka. Wole Shwenka. Chimamanda. Chimamanda and all of the rest. Uh, based on political sentiments as well. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, discretion. So every, everyone has the right to reject awards, luckily. <laughs> uh, it's not as if you're going to be forced to accept it. And it's not a Nigerian thing. People reject awards all over, all over the, the world. world. It's, there's nothing new to it. There's nothing special about it. There's nothing unique about it. When you say someone isn't deserving, let's take away the sentiment and look at how practical it is. Starting from the issue of criticizing the government's with AY being singled out. Like it or not, AY is one of the most neutral yes, celebrities in Nigeria. Yes, he is. You, I'm waiting for the person that can quote mm. where AY said, ah, mm. this government is, mm -mm. AY mm. is fact, very careful. We are telling, yes, mm. we are yeah, yeah. at an event. There's been at different events. Yes, where, several, yeah, as a matter where, of fact. Um, AY has spoken objectively always what whether it was prior to the elections or you know during or after during or after he's always been very objective mm -hmm. when it comes to you know he doesn't take a side he's not mm -hmm. biased in mm -hmm. any way mm -hmm. um so i'll just let you finish. yeah i i was actually going to say that the, with the kind of person that he is mm -hmm. he plays it safe now some people might say oh that means you are you know, call him coward, call him names and all. But this is a man that would rather just stay in the middle and keep pointing out the mm. faults mm. all around and just stay neutral mm. or keep praising whoever is doing right. You know, he's that kind of person. So regarding criticizing the government, there's a comma there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that that applies to AY. But if you're talking of, of an OBO, for example, we all know how vocal he has been politically in the last mm. two years. Mm. So if... He was directing that, um, co you know, comments that comment toward. to towards Davido. Many people would understand, mm -hmm. but AY, 
I'm still trying to marry it. Okay, we um, need to bear in mind that, or people need to know that um, this list didn't just fall from the sky. Mm -hmm. People, Careful consideration. Yes, there was a lot of considerations and a rigorous um, um, selection, selection process, process yeah. that went into it mm -hmm. before it was finally handed over to the president mm -hmm. for, you know, approval or for that these people are deserving mm. of these national honors. Mm. Like Mike mentioned earlier on, you, it's not just anyone mm. that's been given this, uh, this mm. award or mm. this honor. Mm. People who have achieved, to, who, have, who have yeah. achieved certain feats, mm -hmm. who have contributed to national building and uh, national development, who have also con contributed to nation, nation building, who have also, you know, done or, you know, exhibited one act of bravery mm -hmm. or gallantry, mm -hmm. one way or another, mm -hmm. that is in the interest of the nation. Mm -hmm. So um, let's just allow people to enjoy and get their flowers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The because like yeah. it or not, at the yeah. moment, Ewa yeah. is like flowers. the biggest comedian in Africa, not even Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Check out his followers. When you it's check his arguable. followers count, it's, you, <laughs> it's actually an arguable statement. You can check it out. His follower counts. Of, uh, when you compare it to other it's not a popularity in, contest. It's, it's about bro, quality. Bro, we know of, how <laughs> payments are made these days. We don't like it, <laughs> but the reality is, not saying anything when it comes to in. social media, <laughs> when it comes we to need, social media, uh, social media many people judge with social I'm media. We cannot, we, well, hey, we cannot deny that. We cannot deny that. I think he's a fine comedian. He's mm. great, great. He's done so much for the uh, entertainment world. Congratulations to him in any case. Uh, and. Uh, Oh, let him enjoy his flowers. Exactly. Let <laughs> like him enjoy his flowers. Tell us what you think. Use yeah. the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Give your opinion. We'd love to read. We'll be back. <laughs> and we are back. Interesting facts there. With me in the kitchen is Chef Natural. It's been a while, dude. Yeah. Where you been? Been around. Completely forgotten about us. Lie, lie. And you I'm better not. Just waiting for my turn. You better, oh, right? Our local, man. Our local, right? Nice. <laughs> it's good to have you. Yeah. And so man. today, Natural will be making Giz Dodo. Hmm. I'm so excited. I know. And I know Mike's always in the corner because he loves Giz Dodo. Whoa. Oh, no, Gizad, actually, not the Giz Dodo. But hey, let's talk about the ingredients for our yeah. meal this morning. Giz Dodo is simply Gizad. And, and dodo, dodo right. so don't let's speak too much English. Okay. So we have our gizzard, which is the main protein right here. Okay. And this is very, very rich, you know, in uh, essential vitamins like mm -hmm. B vitamin B12. It enhances the brain functionality. Mm -hmm. And aside that, we have our plantain, which is the sub mm. main, you know, ingredient. And we have our pepper sauce. You know, so few spices uh, to okay. just get it going on. So it's just a very simple food. Mm. It's like an Ijebu man just so guy and want to... Well, <laughs> um, well, an Ijebu man watching right now may not agree with you because... Uh, this Ijebu man is here now. <laughs> oh, you're <Ijebu. laughs> <I'm gonna farm. laughs> This doesn't feel like just putting gari and soaking it in a bowl yeah, and drinking. So a lot simple. of work actually is going into this recipe. Sure. I mean, you forgot to mention um, our green... Yeah, 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 yeah. We have our, you know, it does the green bell peppers. Mm -hmm. It's going to use to garnish the spring onion, and I have my English garlic to marinate my gizzard. Okay, so what are we starting with for the gizzard? Are we chopping it? Are we uh, I need to, I need, I need, because you know, most of them, this thing comes in very, very big form. And okay. if you try to boil it like this, it might not really get soft in it. Mm. So I'm just, just giving it that little, okay. little cut before okay. I uh, boil it. Okay, uh, after then, you know, I'll stir fry. I find my plantain, okay. do my classic pepper sauce, okay. and we do the mix. Okay, so, so um, I'm quite you know, fascinated about this recipe. Why? Because of the pepper. So this just gives it, you know, gives it another, you know, twist, basically, because, I mean, um, this is not the regular gizu that we're used to. You're also going to be using um, tomato tea, tomatoes, paste. tomato paste as well. Um, okay, so let's get cooking, right? So first off, for our gizu, are we going to chop it before we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to put this through in a minute, like chop okay. it. Okay, what do you board. need? I need a board. Okay, um, if you're just joining us, guys, with me in the kitchen is Chef Natural. And this morning he's making Giz Dodo. Do -do. If you're wondering uh, what is Giz Dodo, well, it is a combination of gizzard and plantain, right? It's really, so common, among it the, it's really common among the Eco people. Oh, really? People. We use it for starter. 
I always uh, say, it. Uh -huh, if you don't okay. want people to rush your jello fries, you ah, give them this dodo. Do do. First one, you chop down first before. Me, the me they use whole belly first you before the main meal. Correct. And in times like this, where you know plantains can be quite expensive, <coughs> right? What other alternatives would you suggest for our plantain? The only alternative, if you can't get a uh, plantain, is you lock up. <laughs> <laughs> so you can afford <laughs> because you can't do anything if it's right. If it's not it, it's, it's not it. Uh, okay, it. <laughs> got it, got it. Okay, um, I see that you're chopping our gizzards yeah. right so now. By the time I'm gonna be steaming it, it's mm. really gonna soft, mm. get soft and fast. Okay, so I'm gonna be quite honest with you, right? I am not a fan of gizzard. Whoa. So give me another alternative. That I could use, and if you don't like to substitute this, for my this is gizzard. turkey gizzard. He has turkey his own vibe. This is turkey gizzard. Okay, so what makes and the has, difference? You can see it's very, very. He has that big. It's mature. Feel, yeah. Mm, okay. You know, turkey can always be very big, mm. uh, and you have the chicken gizzard. Too, okay. Which is also very nice, but he has a different taste. Okay. So if you don't like this, can go for that. But if it's not, I told you, if it's not gizzard. And mm. no, it's not beef. It's if not If you are using beef now, okay. it's going to be beef dodo. And I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you heard it from Chef Natural himself, guys. So while we are prepping things here in the kitchen and just getting them started, we're going to begin... Um, Working on our gizzard in a bit, yeah, right? I'm going right. To be we're going to season this. it and then steam it, wait for it to cook before, you know. But hey, we're not doing this without you guys. Um, but while we're prepping things up right here in the kitchen, let's head over to the couch for a newspaper review with Mazino and Mary. Well, thank you very much, MM. Um, now, you're welcome. Uh, let's review the headlines for the dailies, which you might be grabbing this morning. A very exciting headlines for this morning. And, uh, of course, I have Mary here with me. Thank you very much, Mary, for joining. Let's do thank this you. together. Okay. We're going to be starting from the Tribune newspaper this morning, and it is loaded, even if I say so myself. First big headline here, President Tinubu's era begins, and it has a list of some of his policies um, his policy uh, thrust, uh, I'm going to take them one by one. Okay. Um, all subsidy gone, CBN must work towards unified exchange rate, multiple taxation, anti-investment inhibition, inhibitions to be reviewed. Mm. Investors, foreign businesses will be able to expatriate their hard-earned uh, dividends mm -hmm. home. Um, interest rates need to be reduced. Currency swap policy to be reviewed. Electricity will become more accessible. States to be encouraged to develop local sources. And there's more on page four for the Tribune news. But there's a lot that concerns each and every Nigerian inside yes. of this policy list. So I, 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 there was an essay to be written yesterday mm -hmm. <laughs> for the little one. Mm -hmm. So that made me have to go through the speech all over again. And okay. I found it really interesting. Two things struck me. One, while it was making his speech, he only had bullet points. Mm -hmm. He said everything from memory. Mm -hmm. And I found that really commendable because he's known for his intelligence. Mm -hmm. The second thing that struck me was how almost every area in Nigeria was touched in his speech. Mm -hmm. So here goes. He was talking about um, the CBN. Now, th people have been worried about the currency um, the swap policy, and yeah. the issues. Narrow and he policy. says it's going to be reviewed mm -hmm. and as far as he's concerned, in his administration, until further notice, both the old and the new currency will continue to be in circulation. Stay valid, and they will continue to be in circulation. Now, besides that, the issue of multiple taxation is one that usually frightens of investors. So he's saying, okay, I'd like to bring in investors. I'd like to encourage you to come. Don't worry, there will be no problem with your money. Mm -hmm. Your money will be repatriated as you expect. Mm -hmm. And of course, as several other of such. And of, so many, yeah. so many. And the fact is, you did mention it, everybody is invested in yes. every single policy, yes. especially electricity. That's something that everybody yeah, is Yeah, electricity. Very about. There's more headlines on the front page for the Tribune. Before exit, Buhari names mm -hmm. airport after self, mm -hmm. Awolowo, Idiagbon. Uh, Okadibu and others that on page 7 and of course uh, the announcement here of Raymond Dokwasi as he dies at 71. Uh, we talked about that just this morning. Fuel queue surface sustainable positions, uh, um, uh, sustainable position on subsidy removal. Um, after the announcement, I mean everybody was witness to that. Fuel stations got all flooded with everybody heading to the fueling stations for panic buying. However, the Minister of Petroleum has come out to tell that 
be patient, don't worry, we have enough in store to last for a very long time. And he actually welcomed the idea of the removal. So uh, it's safe to say that there's, there's thought that's been put into it, or at least something that has been, a structure has been made from before. So this is a Nigerian problem. An announcement is made. No official declaration has been made. This was in the president's speech. He didn't say henceforth. He said full subsidy will be removal will be suspended. I find it worrisome what the, the petrol pet, petroleum companies are putting Nigerian through, mm. Nigerians through, and I've continuously done so. You cannot find full anywhere. Mm. The few places that are open, the queues are insane because everyone wants to try to get fuel. It's ridiculous. All right. But then I heard uh, diesel prices went down. I'm surprised. 660 in some places. I'm Only like, just by a fraction. Okay. Yeah, Only by 200. <laughs> over 200. Let's move on now to ah. the Punch newspaper. Uh, you want to take that real quick? For okay, the yes, I, I, I will. Okay, so the Punch newspaper has this. Nigeria will not break up, says Tinubu. Uh, meets US, UK, uh, Saudi Arabia envoys. And then, of course, the uh, president says uh, Nigeria will continue to exist. Promises not to be a dictator. I, uh, Eipman uh, he opposes full subsidy removal. Kills resurface in Abuja, Lagos, others. Biden writes President Tinubu, says Nigeria's success is the world's success. Uh, so that's the big one there. Uh, considering the fact that it does seem like uh, indeed a new dispensation has begun. Mm -hmm. uh, still on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Uh, we have this one from uh, former President Jonathan who says, My cabinet members feared being jailed uh, by Buhari. Uh, up here we also see Tinubu, Obaseki, others mourn as Dokwesi dies at 71. Uh, that was a breaking story as at yesterday afternoon. Now down here we see uh, someone who had sworn in for second term. Uh, Zafar governor laments uh, empty treasury. A uh, mother daughter's found dead in Lagos. Uh, Lagos shop, please kill man. A uh, probe begins as rampaging youth sets Lagos Police Station ablaze. You see that setting Lagos Police Station ablaze is the one I find really worrisome. Mm -hmm. Because I remember the Agege Police Station was only just recently fixed as well as others. It, it, it's, it's sad, though. Yeah. It's sad. Uh, I wanted to just point out the last uh, point there on the right. Uh, Biden writes President Tinobu says yeah. Nigeria's success is world success. We'll come back to that in just a bit. Mm -hmm. But let's take a look at The Guardian um, while we've okay. just noted okay. that. Scarcity trail, subsidy removal, as Tinobu begins, house cleaning. Um, not much on the front page for The Guardian, but Tinubu's house cleaning agenda here is put in the chart for easy understanding here. There's mm. so much uh, which we have stated from the last paper, um, but wanted to touch on the fact that there has been plenty of groundwork from before he was even inaugurated of as course. president with of him course. visiting other nations and all. And there seems to be a certain interest, international interest in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Not like this hasn't been from before, mm -hmm. but perhaps maybe a renewed one right now with mm. the new dispensation. Mm. What could we be hoping for? Is it gonna go good for the citizenry, especially the individual whose pocket is right now not telling mm -hmm. in the red, let's mm -hmm. put it so. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping for good international co um, co co uh, collaborations and all of that. And I think, Hope is in the air, mm. let's put it so, and we're hoping that everything mm. would be to our advantage as individuals. Mm. We're hoping for the best for our nation. Well, foreign policy is also a major deal for um, the new president. He mentioned that, especially mm. regarding ECOWAS and West African sub-regions, mm. he did state that he's hoping to promote uh, peace and unity uh, amongst Africans uh, in, you know, in the hope of developing the continent as a whole. Uh, so there are promises, and they seem like achievable promises because it seems really simple and relatable to so many people so we can only keep our fingers crossed and hope that within the next four years uh, all of these promises will be kept grand well thank you very much that will be all that we have for the headlines thank you very much mary that was a fantastic one and hopefully you pick up one or two of these and you could also share with us what you think use the hashtag wake up niger on tvc don't go anywhere we'll be back it's, uh, of course, Health Tuesday, and my favorite eye doctor, my favorite optometrist is here, Dr. Sharon Enemo. Now, uh, today we're talking about common eye disorders in the elderly. In the elderly. Yep. Okay, first of all, what is it? Who is elderly? What age do you think elderly starts from? Because there's a poor year, they call themselves elder. And, uh, <laughs> well, to be honest, 50 and above. 50 and above. You could even say 40 for some persons. Ah, 
40. Yeah, not, because so they say for, not because they say 40 is the new 20. <laughs> but the bottom line is 50, 55 and above. Yeah, oh, okay. All right. All right. I understand what you're saying now. And by that time, I mean, you start um, we, with the majority of people. I mean, the eye maybe starts deteriorating as it were and all of that. It's, it's, it's kind of, like I said, it's natural at times. It does happen. How does there... Well, care of eye can make it, you know, stay long and all that. But what are, the, what are the most common disorders that we get to see as one approaches that age? Um, like you said earlier, when we get older, mm. the whole body begins to mm. get old as well. Mm. Yeah, so there are certain disorders that actually begins from 40, but it trends up until the end of life. Presbyopia, that's need for reading glasses, is a mm. disorder that you only see in the elderly. Basically, from 40 and above, you begin to have that. Then there are certain conditions as well that if one has systemically, like diabetes, mm. there are complications of diabetes you find in the eye. Mm. Diabetic retinopathies, you find it at the retina mm. and could lead to vision loss if you don't care for your diabetes very well and leads to that complication in the eye. Mm. So you could also have retinal detachment. These are all disorders you can find. Macular degeneration, age-related macular degeneration. So now, um, to give a background for someone who doesn't have uh, science, you know, um, there's a part of the eye called the retina. Okay. That's, it has almost all the cells the eye needs to see, it's located in the retina. In the retina. That is the powerhouse of the eyes. Now, when you begin to have degenerations in that part, which can occur due to poor systemic health through life, mm. and then as we get older, continuation of that health, this, the poor health that stems and flows into the eye, you now begin to have the disorders I talked about. Okay. So you could have uh, glaucoma as well, there could be cataracts. This one is on the lens. These are other different parts of the eye. Different parts, different layers of the eye. Are there any um, pre? Uh, can one be predisposed due to family medical history when it comes to the eyesight? You know, maybe if your father or your mother maybe used glasses or had this thing. In, in, does it like some in some other cases with the health? Does it tr trickle down to offspring? Yes, there are certain conditions that are hereditary. That's what you're asking. Yes, exactly. Um, people that come from homes where there is um, diabetes tend to have a likelihood of it going into their children, particularly when those children also live lives that are not, I don't want to use reckless, but they're not very healthy. Very healthy. There's a greater possibility that they will have... But is there anyone that specifically just with the eyes? Sightedness. So, sure, okay, so it can, yes. it can be hereditary. It and can all be that. hereditary. So mm. yes, if your parent have it, if a parent has it, there's a 20% chance the children will have. If two parents have it, you're almost looking at almost 70% chance. Is there anything the parents can do? Let's say you're short sighted. Yes, Is there sure. anything they can do? No, I mean for their offspring. <laughs> like from when the, the kid starts up. So in such a way as to prepare the kid for a better life as it were. Is there anything that can be done? For things like myopia that we talked about. Yeah. Now we're deviating from the elder, you know, okay. right? Yeah. Well, elder, yeah. Yes. For things like myopia, you really can't. It's a physiologic thing. It's the way the eye is shaped, you know? A parent has a kind of, like the genes you're passing on, this is the way you are. Your wife's gene is this way. When you cross together, it mixes and then produces a beautiful Then it market. gets worse with age. Yes, it get, myopia doesn't necessarily get worse with age. Okay, Remember, that's what I was going to. Myopia doesn't get worse with age, but there are certain myopia that are degenerative. You can find out even that even a child that is as young as seven, eight, they have degenerative myopia. Myopia, yes. okay. But then, if, if an adult that already has it, as you get older, there are likelihoods that, yes, you could have things like the retinal tear detachment we talked about. Mm. Understand that retinal detachment is a big deal because the retina has layers to the inner and outer layer that are supposed to be stuck together mm. to en enable impulses, visual impulses go to the brain. Mm. When there is a separation, you see there is a gap, a bridge. So impulses that should go to the brain for interpretation, for you to have good vision, is no longer there. Mm. Likelihood of vision loss, of course. And that's why we always advocate for once a year eye examination. I saw this video it, um, about a few months ago. Um, the, I, th I think he's the most followed personality on YouTube. He calls himself Mr. Beast. And he had this operation, eye operation, for about over a thousand people. Uh, and they were, most of them were elderly. 
and um, a lot of them recovered their sight. That's what I said. You know, once a year, at least once a year. But it was it was, it was some sort of an operation or something. Yes, and all of there that. are surgeries that can be done. Numerous be surgeries done. are done, even for this retinal detachment. Mm. There's a surgery, but you have to catch it on time. You see, these things are when you go for that eye exam on time, you find it on time then you can have your vis vision restored as much as possible on time. Mm. But when you just, it will go away. My village people are after me. Mm. It's not normal. Or you just ignore. It deteriorates. And then by the time you finally find yourself into the clinic and then into the surgical center, it's gone. Now, for, I know we've mentioned this before, but for the sake of those who did not, maybe were not done the previous episode, let's talk about some of these symptoms that people ignore that they should watch out for so that they can go, or as they, as they grow older, so that they can go check their eyes. For the elderly, it's yes. important when you can't see distinct images. Sometimes we hear our grandmother say, okay, someone is coming. I know the person by voice. I really mm. didn't see the face. Mm, mm. That's a challenge. Mm. It is macular degeneration, because there's a part of the retina that is the macula that gives us precise vision. Mm. Once you begin to see shadows, you are looking at a table, for example, and one part of the table is gone as in there's a shadow, but yeah. you see the other parts, please go see your doctor. When you begin to notice you're looking at someone, the face isn't very close, except they come to a certain distance. They certain distance. It is a problem. Go see your doctor. When you begin to have eye pains, some will tell you, oh, it's pain. We, we, know, we know how to bear things mm, in this part do, of the do, world. We do. We know how to we bear do. pain because we're we like, okay, I don't want to go to the hospital and spend money we used to eat. Forgetting that your eye is important. If you don't have eyes, you won't even have economic value to be able to find what you will eat. That's why when you talk about operations today, I am I'm already... Uh, you know, it, it's look, strange. there are people that are trained for this, this and they are yeah. good at it. So the earlier those things, the advantage is taken when you have issues and you need to have a surgery, do it quickly and get your vision back quickly. Mm. People have cataracts and they have what we call preventable blindness. But be preventable because... All they need is a surgery, and they can get their eyes back the eyes if back. other things in the eye are good. Are good. Okay. But some will go with it five, ten years because they don't know they should see a doctor. Let me say, let me give them benefit of doubt. Of doubt. Or they know they are looking at the economic implications, mm. or they think it will go away. We give ourselves reason to just keep tarrying along, and the eyes degenerate as we tarry as along. We tarry along. Wow. Thank you so much, Doctor. This. It's, it's always an expose talking to you, and uh, yes, I'll trust you with my eyes. <laughs> I will definitely <laughs> Please. check. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, it's always right, a, a pleasure, pleasure to be here. All right, okay, so let's head over to MM in the kitchen. MM, can you see the what you're cooking very well? I just want to be sure. Uh -uh. I've learned enough in this one hey, month. Hey. I can conduct eye tests too, don't try me. Mike, this week, that this month that you've decided to focus on eye matters <laughs> with uh, Dr. Sharon, you don't want us to hear what you're feeling like an optometrist already. I, as in, I've I can learned see to. clearly my eyes are functioning at its optimal best. Mm. Thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> you say so. Welcome to the kitchen, guys. Chef Natural here with me. As you can see, Baba is hard at work. I mean, just making sure that this meal comes together very nicely. We are making, well, he's making giz dodo. I'm not yeah. going to take credit yeah, for your work. As well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here. We are in this together. <laughs> yes, we are, if Natural says so. Let's so. talk about the ingredients quickly. And, yeah, my uh, gizzard. Uh, I'm steaming my gizzard. Okay, you I added, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what's yeah. going on in there. So what's what what did you? The what gizzard, are you doing? Uh, the seasoning powder, the salt, okay. the English garlic, and that's okay. all I have here for now. Okay. So I just want to steam it. Okay. So I want to at the outside. I'm frying my plantain. Okay. And meanwhile, I want to get my veggies ready, ready. for garnish. Okay. So now, when you say garnish, is this going into the heat at all? No, no, no. I'm not gonna really eat this. When okay. The food, when the food is ready. Okay. After mixing the gizzard. And okay. The gizzard, okay. When that transformation of gives the dose is ready, we now add up this just to you know garnish it. Okay, it's gonna be Great. steamed with it, it's oh. not, but it's not, we're not really cooking. All like okay, this. um, take us through the process once again. So, now that I, when our giz, giz, gizzard is ready, what's next? I see that you're heating up vegetables. Once already. the gizzard is ready, okay, I'll take it out. I need to still put in some uniform cutting. Okay, you know? okay. So I'm gonna stir fry that separately. Okay. I'll stir fry my plantain separately. Okay. So I'll now focus on my. So sauce. when you say stir fry, you need to let people know that it has to be properly cooked. Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah. the plantain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 the plantain is just gonna be fried. Okay. But the gizzard has to be very. 
cooked. Very, yeah, very well you cooked fry. before you stir fry. Fantastic. And then, when our plantains and our gizzard is ready, what's next? We're going to do the mix. We're going to mix it together. There's okay. a way I need to moderate the pepper sauce so mm. it probably don't be too much. Okay. If I need my heart. There's a way I'll put it through. We're, okay. We're here uh, well, um, just in case we don't get to see it live, mm. I would like you to explain it. Um, so I know that you're working on the pepper mix, yeah. right? Once that is ready, what, what do we do with it? And what I do with the pepper, pepper sauce is just to set it aside. Okay, so we're going to fry the pepper sauce, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to fry the pepper okay. sauce. Okay, and then add in our tomato this. paste. Yes, yeah, uh, we didn't even mention this the other oh, time. Oh, the chili sauce. I have sauce. my chili sauce. Okay. It's going to make a, just, just take a step out of the regular taste. Okay, okay. So all of that is coming together with the pepper sauce. Yeah, pepper yeah, 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 that is and going to go inside the pepper sauce. Okay. Um, yes, so um, breakfast is coming together really nicely. There's so much work to be done. Um, our pepper is still somewhere. We're fixing that, making sure it's properly well blended. Um, our gizzard is cooking. We're about to fry our plantains, right? Yeah. Right. And um, yes, so we're making progress here in the kitchen. Okay, well done, Chef Natural. Well done. All right, we're at the top of the hour, people. We have to go. But hey, we need you to... Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. We'll be right back shortly. Oh, yes. Welcome back. Second hour here. Now, having the right breakfast might be all the fueling you need to get through the day. Yes. Consider the second hour, well, less than 45 minutes, as that meal you can't pass up. Whether you are full, whether you are hungry, whether you are thirsty, well, we are all that you need to make your day go swell. Yeah, don't get distracted now, just stick with us because <laughs> we have plenty to come this hour here. It's only 45 minutes long, but it's packed full. Everything yes. that you need to know. Plenty has been happening inside of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Well, Mary, how's it been going in there? Well, I only just got here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah. It that, doesn't seem like MM true. and the Chef Natural have been very busy this morning. What are we having for breakfast again? Giz dodo. Giz dodo. Hmm. So I remember he said earlier that you can't have giz dodo without the giz out, of course. Mm. <laughs> so we're looking forward to the end result of this. Okay? Well, All definitely. right. I can tell you for a fact that MM is really hungry. She hasn't, she's been saying it repeatedly, repeated. she's been saying it over and over again since. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm crying. Where's your gum gum? So that you oh can make my. it loud enough. Well, funny you should say gum gum. Did you know? Yeah. That the Nigerian national instrument is actually the gong gong. Yes, it is actually. Yeah, not everybody. Why do you think that. I asked for you to sing oh, this? I, I did not do national or the gong gong. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. It's all good. Well, thank you very much for joining us. My name is Bazito Appeal. And I am MM Imeo Kwachet. Guys, do not forget that you can watch this show live on Go TV. You'll find us at Channel 16 and here at Jeff, Channel 49. Yeah, you can also stream the show live. TVC Entertainment TV is the way to go. And on Facebook as well at TVC Connect. Send in your comments. We love to read them on mm -hmm. Facebook, TikTok, mm -hmm. Instagram, all these social mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC, please. We also have an app, guys. Yes, we do. You can find us on both the Android and iOS stores. Uh, this also allows you to watch us anywhere in the world at your own convenience. Yes, now let's let you know what we have for the final hour. Shortly, for a musical performance, we have Danny Boy. He's a vocalist and songwriter. He'll be serenading us with a tune titled Because of Love. Because of Love. Mm -hmm. And we also have a young filmmaker, the winner of the best short film category for this year's AMVCA, Adeoye Adetsunji. He'll be joining us to talk about his film titled Pa Aromire. Finally, former Big Brother Africa housemate Akintayo Fanera, who returned to television screens as, as a Nino, Nino Lowe, you guys remember him, in the reverting crime drama Gangs of Lagos. He'll be with us today, so if you can't wait for that one, well, you have to, because, hey, we feel the same way too. <laughs> yes, indeed. Right. Welcome back. Second hour here, and the day is, is complete. Let's talk about the uh, elephant in the room. Yeah. <laughs> this what morning, is the elephant in the room? It was on my removal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the um, president um, announced yesterday that there is no provision for it inside of the budget. Mm -hmm. And that has caused so much panic buying. Everybody swamped over mm -hmm. to the fueling stations mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. night. This morning, you were telling yeah. me about how the road... I saw bus stops and all of that. They were packed with people. Mm -hmm. I and if you know me, the last time this happened, that site, 
really gets it's depressing. Mm -hmm. Mm. Once I see that site, once I see bus stop parks and all, and then the few that are moving, their fares are now like mm -hmm. 100, 150, 200 percent hike. Course. Mm -hmm. mm. Of course. And so I, I start thinking about it. There were times, and there are still times, mm -hmm. I still have to use public transport. Yeah. I'm thinking of oh, this guy has to get to work. What's going through his mind? Yeah. You know, there's a lot. Yes, but we had known for a while that subsidy subsidy had to be removed. Yeah. For there's been talk of the loan that was yeah, taken. Exactly. I don't know what's the, the what stage the process is now. <clears throat> loan, yeah. uh, I I don't we don't have all these deals yet mm. because depot depot uh, owners or depot managers are saying that they don't have clarification mm. on the process yet. And that's something Mary said. I, I, do, I don't think it was, the president when he was talking about it, was not saying, oh, from this moment, because exactly. they were, you know. So uh, on, as, as time goes, we expect some clar clarification to come. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that. Uh, to add to that, Mike, the Minister of Petroleum actually did come out only just yesterday evening to tell that there is enough in store. And mm. it, this would. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so he doesn't understand so why there's enough. You would like to, exactly. This is it. It's, it's the. The depot owners, it would seem, are hoarding because, like you said, no clarification. But then again, there are those who are saying, let's just wait for this and let's sell what we bought at so-and-so price exactly. at so-and-so price. Exactly. So there's that. Exactly. That's the selfishness exactly. that's inside of the exactly. that is That is actually a common thing in Nigeria, just as I mentioned earlier, where there's the possibility of something going up and then a seller decides to hike the price. So mm -hmm. I'm saying this as a seller because... Many people will go after uh, the uh, filling stations or the petroleum companies. It is a Nigerian thing. Mm. When dollar was going up, people are started selling at the dollar that had not gone up yet. <laughs> you see, you see it's the thing, a Niger the thing it's is that, it just has a, I, I wonder, there's a Dangote refinery coming that, that has, That's that will start in July. Effect, right? Mm. All right, July, August, or, and all of that. Mm -hmm. With the whole, with the way the whole thing, I've, I've read many articles, do you understand? Mm. But I, it seems, like a number of these articles don't really even understand what is going on. Mm. Because I'm telling you, it's hard to get somebody to actually pinpoint mm. how all of this, you know, looking at it from a holistic point, mm -hmm. how all of this comes together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a refinery now well, here. This refinery, my, my point is, the expense can be there, mm -hmm. you understand? But then it should be available. Exactly. Availability. So, as in availability. There is also one argument. The argument whether it should have been told at his inaugural speech. There's plenty of talk about that. And perhaps maybe, mm. like you said, there should have been more clarification mm. that should have followed that statement. And the people say it's been removed. Yeah, okay. It's been removed, but it's still being sold mm. at the old at price. The old price. Mm. So what does what what do you mean by it's been removed? Mm. I don't know if you get what I mean. Yeah. I understand it's it, he said it's not in the budget. Mm. It's not in the budget that was that we are running on now. Now or but it's still being sold at that price. Mm. So, so yeah, many. Well, that's so where many I guess, yeah. Yeah. Comes yes, in. Yes. I know that there There's are a, a lot, lot of, of there are a lot of speculations with a lot of Nigerians are functioning or you know we are functioning under right now. There's so much in the air, but let's wait for the this administration. The administration. I'm sure in the next couple of days. Or I expect today, would, you know, yeah. statements from the president. Exactly. Yeah. Would, today. Yeah, there should be statements from yeah. you know, the new administration on what we should expect, yes. you know, in that regard. So news once again on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Mike Messikeno. Now, yesterday, the inauguration of a new administration also took place in 28 states of the Federation. Governor of Lagos, Babajide Songwulu, and his deputy, Obafemi Hamzat, were also sworn in for a second term at the Tafawa Balewa Square in Lagos. And now onto some sad news where uh, the founder of Dark Communications, owners of Africa Independent Television and Raypa FM, Chief Raymond Dokwesi is dead. His death was announced on Monday in a statement signed by his son, Raymond Dokwesi Jr. The statement read, quote, It is with deep sadness and heavy hearts that we announce the passing of High Chief Raymond Aleogo Anthony Dokwesi. Yezomo of Wekba Wanino Kingdom, who passed away on May 29, 2023. High Chief Dokwesi was a beloved husband, father, grandfather, and friend to many. He'll be deeply missed by all who knew him.
end of quote. According to Mr. Dokwesi Jr., High Chief Raymond Dokwesi was an accomplished businessman, a pioneer in the Nigerian media industry, and a philanthropist who dedicated his life to the service of his country and also his community. He says his legacy will live on through the impact he made on the lives of many. On to foreign news, Russian missiles have hit Ukraine's capital, Kiev, following two nights of heavy drone strikes. They were all reportedly shot down and there are no reports of casualties. Flaming debris from the intercepted missiles landed in residential areas in central Kyiv. Russia has launched 16 air attacks on the Ukrainian capital this month. The latest, however, was unusual because it took place during the day and seemed to be targeted at the city center. Air Force spokesman Yuri Inhat said that uh, Iksander ballistic missiles were used in the latest attack and that it was possible S-300 and 400 missiles had also been fired. According to reports, only one, of them, only one person was injured and all missiles were destroyed by Ukrainian air defenses. Russian authorities claimed all their targets had been hit. That's all on the news. We'll take a time out now and be back in a bit. Stay with us. You're welcome. Now we have a very interesting young man with us. This young man is a filmmaker. He was a winner of the best short film category for this year's AMVCA. We're talking about no other than Adeoye Adetunji. He is right here with us and he will be talking to us about his uh, short film titled Pa Arumire. You are welcome, Tunji. Good Thank to you have so you much. here, man. Good to be here. First off, not everybody knows exactly what you do. I know you're a short filmmaker and you got the AMVCA awards for uh, this year for short, best short movie. Best short film. I don't know. Did that come with any... Yeah, my category was sponsored was by sponsored. a telecommunication giant. So, I mean, it's... So you got something? I got something. Oh, so that's fantastic. <laughs> Let's share it later. Yeah. But um, that's not all you do. You've also been in our on our screens and all of that, but we didn't know that that was your handwork. What are some of these things that we, we've seen that perhaps maybe we didn't know was your... Um, so, I've been a filmmaker for 17 years, mm -hmm. actually. So, um, I've been an art director, basically. Art director. Art director. So, we're responsible for the looks, everything you see on camera, aside the actors. And to my credits, uh, Bandana music video. So, oh. Yeah. So, all the world you've seen in Bandana oh. was created. And... Uh, well, Bandana, that was the one with the... It's something about any video with Ashake in it. There's always that... Angled yeah, shots and everything, sure. and it has to have a very big, beautiful background. Background. So that background, that's all you. It was created. It was just an empty space, so we wow. created. Um, it was quite some work. The whole metallic feel and yeah. everything it was it was non-existent. The whole tree, actually, we actually built the tree. Really? Yes, actually. In the banana video. In the banana video. Wow. It was not existing. How long did that take? It took me ten days. Ten days, a ten weekend. Days. Yes. That's a lot. Wow. Is it easy to do your kind of job? Uh, I love what I do, so. I think that's it. Passion. Passion. It's anything else. But let's talk about you now. Um, short music, uh, short, uh, short film. Um, did you think you were going to get that award at the no. NPCAs? No. You didn't? Why? Uh, it was a very tough category. Mm -hmm. I mean, industry giants were in that category. And um, first off, it was a huge success being nominated for that category because... On its own. On that, yeah, that was the first time in the history of AMVCA that um, the class of stop motion animation would ever be nominated. Mm. So what I did was a stop motion animation. Yeah. It has never been nominated before. So yeah. being nominated alone was a huge success. But the industry general, I just felt like, you know what? Last year, I was nominated in the class of art directing, best art, art director, mm -hmm. you know, and I went there, I didn't win. So... From last year's lesson, I just went there. Let me just so flex. This is your second time getting this my, nominated. Yes, yes. This is your first time winning. This is my first Stop time. Stop motion winning. animation. Not everybody knows what that is, but that is a very tedious Ex filmmaking extremely art. Extremely tedious. You ha it will take you an entire year to put together like five minutes of work. Well, I'm exaggerating, but you get the See, idea. Uh, Parami was for 13 minutes. Mm -hmm. It took me four months to just sequence alone. 13 minutes. 13 minutes. It took you four months. Four months. Explain the process for stop motion animation. So basically, it's just um, manipulation, mm -hmm. just um, abstract um, illusion, just creating um, non moving objects as though it's moving. So let me give you an instance. If I do this, then I snap myself. And then, then I do this, then I snap myself. Then. So by the time I sequence everything, it's as though I'm actually moving. Uh -huh. But um, I'm not. Do you understand? So it's just like um, modifications just to alter those movements. So, you have, for one minute, you could have as much as, depending on the frame rate, mm -hmm. you could have as much as 2,000 pictures wow. just to sequence one detail. That is a lot. Um, I, 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 I'm very interested in stop motion animation. I'm, I'm from the 80s, so, <laughs> I mean, stop motion animation was something that we kind of like grew up. It was very jerky. In yeah, the yeah, back in those days, <laughs> but the frame rates. I, I have a couple of favorites that I follow. There's a, there's a young man called uh, Barnaby Dixon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He was uh, part of the... Uh, 
uh, crew that made um, the Dark Crystal, oh. uh, the new one actually. And I follow him on, uh, on social media, but he's moved on into puppetry now. But it is the tedium of the process that really gets me interested. And the fact that we have that here in Nigeria embodied in you, that really gets me very, very excited. What's the future for that, however, with people like you on board now? Um, so I'm not the only, funny enough, I'm not the only stop motion anima animator in the country. There are other individuals, grassroots, people, studios that are, that are popping up in the, and, and, and that's fantastic, you know. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll have um, the categories for, for animations and stop motion gro yeah. going forward. So that will really encourage people to go into the craft. But okay. I think this right now is a huge one. And it was shot on my phone, actually. No. Yes, it was. For real? Yeah. I'm not wow. sure. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. So I mean, I'm, I'm just saying this so that wherever I wants to start, you, you can have, start. You don't need too much of gadgets, uh, oh. basically. It's just a part. I think you could do a course for it. Maybe people could join in and. So there are talks ongoing as mm. to as to that right now. Okay, that's incredible. Okay, so um, let's talk about Pa Aromire. What's the storyline behind Pa Aromire? Why did you choose that? It's a, it's a very cultural sounding type. Uh, um, premise, let me put it, so what, tell us about that. Um, there is the appeal side of Paromer, there's the strategy part of Paromer. Um, while I was in Paromer, I was not thinking Nigeria, mm. because it wasn't, um, it wasn't our thing. Mm -hmm. I felt like I can't beat the Westerners to stop motion animation, mm. but there's no Nigerian story to stop motion animation. Mm -hmm. So I wanted something cultural, I mean, to just set the pace for it. And I mean, that's, that, 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 that's, that's what I did. And of course, I'm a very traditional guy, uh, yeah. you know, so um, I felt like it was something I could give. Not considering your hair, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just have to, you know, look it. So, you know, basically that was, that was it. Then I felt a pressing need to um, create a discussion. Mm -hmm. um, pa Paramir is pretty much a very controversial, in the scope of details, it's a very controversial story. Mm. You know, I just want to talk about gender inclusion using Yoruba girls as case study. Nice. It would not work. Like, we, yeah. you can't find a relatable story. The, the Yoruba girls will always be the villain, yeah. which I thought was too sensitive mm. and it would bring about conversations that I'm, I'm a peacemaker, I don't like yeah. fights. Yeah, but then kind of love. I discovered that the scope of vulnerability with Yoruba girls is a valid discussion. Mm -hmm. Issue is a troublemaker, he is this, is that, and so what? Shongo has anger issues and so what. So, you know, I, I, I engaged a, tra I'm a Yoruba man, yeah. but not a traditional practitioner. So I engaged a practitioner. And he told me, he said, go ahead. It's, it's a valid discussion. We know such gods have this. Well, that's a very interesting thing. Yeah. I, I never thought about it that way, you know, actually. Yeah. I'm, it, so I'm I mean, actually, anger issues, issues, the mischief. Is the mischief and. Uh, which uh, other one now? Uh, who else could we give um, an example of? The god of um, chicken pots and uh, what's the what? I, can't remember I mean, that. you can't, you, you'd see that they'll tell you that there's a good side to them, there's a, there's the yeah. downside to, to them. Then I could relate it with Greek mythology. That's why I have um, Achilles heels, and you, you can yeah. see that they are open to uh, vulnerability, yeah. And it's, it was a good ex. I mean, growing up, my feet, you can't question details. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I just assumed for them, like, no, it's a valid discussion for yeah. us. You know what, you've done, you've actually brought the Nigerian culture to the fore using medium that are very global. Mm. Stop motion animation, Nigerian gods, I mean, bridging that gap in between what they know about the Nigerian culture. I mean, as young as 15, well, 15 10, I knew so much about Greek, Greek mythology and very little about the Nigerian, mm. about Yoruba gods or, or so and so. Um, to the extent that I started learning about the, the Nigerian culture and gods from foreign movies. If you've seen American Gods, there are very many Nigerian gods in that movie or in that series. But not us telling our story. I know animation is taking us there finally, and I'm very happy that there are plenty of people who are doing animations with gods in view, using them as heroes and all. But stop motion, that's another medium that I'm finding very, very interesting, and I think it's fantastic. Thank Congratulations you. on your award. Thank you so much. Anything for the future? We're we looking at a bigger, longer movie from you? Um, okay, so right now we're still on another short uh, piece called um, uh, Melon Street. Okay. And, uh, Melon Street, we just were pushing for it also. And okay. thereafter, okay. when we increase on capacity, of course, we're doing feature length. Here. Fantastic. Well, we cannot wait at it. Please keep the flag flying for Nigeria and stop motion, uh, stop motion animation. Thank you. So. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Tuesday, June, we've got more, well, a little bit more here inside of Wake Up Nigeria. 
And right. we are back. Thanks for staying with us. Finally joining us on the couch is former Big Brother Africa housemate, Akintayo Fani Ron. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so he returned uh, to television screens as Nino Lowo in the reverting crime drama, Gangs of Lagos. He's here with us now, just as we earlier said. Good to have you in the studio with us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, our pleasure. Yeah. 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 Only you, model, actor. Uh, uh, not good now. <laughs> yeah, just giving them, giving them. Not good. It's, it's, um, it's so good to have you. It's good to be here too. All right, so let's talk about your hiatus from the entertainment scene. Okay. Before you know, um, you featured in Gangs of Lagos. You were out for, on, you were I me. Mean, you were away for a really yeah. long time. Yeah. Talk to us about you know what was you know happening during that period. What were you experiencing? Maybe I should face here because I can see. <laughs> the <angle. laughs> no, you didn't. I can see the angle. So, uh, so yeah. It, you know, going for Big Brother Africa was a really big, um, you know, big thing. Mm. And uh, at, that, at that moment, at that point, there was nothing bigger than Big Brother Africa on mm. TV, you know. Mm. And uh, the, there's a type of fame that comes with being on Big Brother Africa that makes you feel like um, yeah, you, are, life. you are there, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, so at that point, because I was used to living in South Africa, I was more comfortable in South Africa. I mean, if you've been to South Africa, you know, mm. you know that living there is to come back to Lagos. You know, it's like maybe moving back. You know, mm. it's, it's not an easy decision. You know, mm. but that time after Big Brother, I was here for a year, so it wasn't the same. I thought, okay, I'm gonna go back to South Africa, where I thought maybe if producers still needed me from here, they would probably mm, call me from you. there and all that. Mm. But mm. unfortunately, that didn't happen. You know, so as I was in South Africa. I was still doing things here and there. I was still modeling. Okay. Uh, I did one or two films, you know. Uh, there was actually a big one I did in 2017. It was a big Pan-African film. Okay. Uh, in South Africa with their top stars like uh, Trevor Gumbi, Celeste Ntuli, uh, Pindile Guala and the likes, you know. So, uh, but it wasn't the same because being in South Africa as a Nigerian actor, mm. I also didn't mm. learn any South African languages, you know. So, so it sort of limited you. You get what I'm saying? It limited me, so I wasn't getting as much as I could, mm -hmm. you know. But And also, um, that's why I would not stop being grateful to, uh, you know, the people who actually stayed in Nigeria, you know, to cook Nollywood mm. to the level that mm. it, it is got now. to. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Mm. That it's now really attractive, mm. you know, for a person to, you know, because I, I love fresh stuff, you know, and Nollywood is really fresh right mm. now. It's really cool, you know, like, look at Gangs of Lagos, mm. you know, it's, it's not like what we're used to, you know, mm. back then, you know, mm. so I thought, you know what, I'm going back home mm. uh, and I'm grateful to God. But since I go back in 2019, it's not been easy, though. Mm. Uh, I've been putting in work here and there, uh, but I'm grateful to God that now uh, it's crowning my efforts. Yeah. Now, yeah, you've been putting in work here and there, and then, of course, you landed on Gangs of Lagos. Tell us how that happened. How did you uh, get um, auditioned for Yeah, that? so uh, I, didn't get a, I didn't audition for Gangs of Lagos. Really? So, yeah, the, okay. the director and producer, um, Jade Oshiperu, Oshiper. Oshiper. uh, she sent me a DM. In 2021, okay. uh, I was I was in Maldives for vacation then, and then I got a DM from her, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I mean, this is it's what happening. I've been waiting yes. for, you know, because she was, you know, so modest and everything. But in my mind, I'm thinking, <laughs> is that <laughs> this day? Is this day? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so she just reached out to me because I produced a TV film of mine. Then okay. it's called Man Like Jimmy. Mm. Uh, I produced it in 2020, so it's on the back of TV. So while I was promoting it, you know, that was when she reached out to say, oh, congratulations, I saw your film is coming out. I mean, like, she was trying to encourage me as mm -hmm. well. And at the same time, she was like, oh, actually, I have a project that we're about to work on starting from June. Mm. And there's a character that I know that will be, you know, perfect for you. Mm. So I'll reach out. I'm like, okay, cool. So since that time, I was always waiting. And when it was time, she did reach out for real. Uh, received emails and all that, and that was how it just started, you know. Mm. Yeah. There is how no doubt that she has eye for talent. Yeah, she Almost does. everyone yeah. got their role yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about how yeah. you felt when you read for Nino. Yeah. How did you feel? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so when, you know, after she had told me that, right, uh, I was expecting a script, you know, because I've 
I had not done a blockbuster film mm. that I would say that, okay, maybe she saw me playing that role and she believed in me so mm. much, you mm -hmm. know. So I was, uh, despite the fact that I was grateful that she was going to give me a script, but I didn't expect... It to be I didn't that's expect it to be as big, big as, as Nino, as you know, so, yeah. so I, that was what I was just looking out for. But the moment I got the synopsis, you know, the character Bible and everything, and I saw the list of other actors that I was with as the mm. lead roles. You're like, Tayo, like, Chevy, okay. <laughs> you know. What's going on? Yeah, you know, and then I went ahead to, uh, I proceeded, you know, to read the script, and I saw the storyline, and I saw the responsibility that Nino carries in the story that, mm. okay, you know, this is the beginning of the story. Mm. This is the part where we need to win the mm. heart of the people because mm. if my time would bore people, mm. they wouldn't even be able to wait to watch the yes, other interesting true. parts. Yes, or true. I also didn't want the situation whereby they would be watching Ty of Nero and be like, Oh, well, and then the next thing, other actors will come yeah. and they'll be like, ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. you, know, so, you know, so I was like, nah, it's not going to be like that. So I was prepared to kill it and I'm grateful to God for helping me. So oh, you, you, met, you, you, said, you made a Yoruba statement now smoothly, yeah. yeah. and yeah. The, I recently watched you, in fact, just last week, yeah. I watched you uh, on a cooking show, okay. making chakalaka. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while watching it, yeah. I was amazed by how fluid your Yoruba your is. Yeah. Like, you speak Yoruba so well, mm, mm. and you're yeah. a good cook as well. So I'm going to start Thank from you. the Yoruba before I talk about the cooking yeah. part. <laughs> how were you able to maintain that energy, especially yeah. with your language? Because yeah. some people, when they go abroad Travel. for a while, yeah. it's either they deliberately yeah. lose mm, that yeah. Yoruba mm, language, yeah. or yeah. even when they don't lose it, they start Putting accents. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How? Okay, so if younger generation, you know, if anyone is watching me right now, uh, you need to stick to your originality, respect your culture, respect your language, your tribe, everything. When I was growing up, I grew up in New York, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see Lagos until I was 18, you know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't miss out on anything. The mm -hmm. swag, the funk, and everything, I had it, even mm -hmm. back then, you know? Yeah. So I was cool enough to not even speak Yoruba. We can Yoruba. see it's still part of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so I was cool enough to not speak Yoruba. A lot of my mates then thought if you were speaking Yoruba, you were not cool, or maybe mm. you were local. Mm. You know, even at this level, I go to a place, maybe in LA, wherever, I, mm. I'd rather speak my language mm. because it's up to you to, to think I'm local. I'm international. Mm. Nothing can take that from me, you know, yeah. but my language, yeah, exactly. I love it so much, you know. Mm. So the same language that I've was piped for in the mm. past that, oh, no, why are you speaking Yoruba? Mm -hmm. It's what is paying off today. Mm. I'm shining. I'm being cool with my language. Mm. So I lived in South Africa for 12 years. Mm. I could have thrown away my language, you know. Uh, I can speak English for days. I was on Big Brother Africa where there was nobody to speak Yoruba to. So I'm, I'm comfortable speaking English, right? Mm -hmm. But I love my language, you know. Good. In my language, my... Uh, uh, in my, my wisdom is hidden inside my language. Your Yoruba is really deep. You get what I'm saying? When you mm. understand Yoruba, mm. you'll be spiritual, mm -hmm. you'll be spiritually sound, you'll be intellectually sound, you know, mm. you'll be sound in all ramifications yeah. of life, you know, so Baby, I'm you should have seen him go. in that stuff. He was like, <laughs> Adu Obe. And I was like, okay, that was actually what made me sit. Like, yeah. okay, oh, it looks wow. like this guy knows what he's doing. You know yeah. what? I well can't done. wait to hear you speak Yoruba, but okay. we'd like you to, you know, you know give us something special, because we about to head over to the kitchen now okay. and we have Giz Dudu for you. The chef yeah. has prepared something very special. So yeah. please, let's head over to the kitchen. All right. Okay. So that's same accolade you And we are back. Welcome to the kitchen, Tayo. And this is Chef Natural Rao. How you doing? This How morning, fresh, nice. he's made for you Giz Dudu. This dodo. Okay. Yeah. So, so can I finish it? Yeah, it's your right. <laughs> It's all yours. Okay. Get closer. Okay. So remember what you said during that show? Mm. Yeah. The, in Yoruba, you were like, you would it, 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 it has to look good mm. first. Mm. This was how he caught his um, peppers and yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Yoruba, tell us. Uh, mm. How do you feel about the nomenclature? She won't do. She won't do. She won't do. Oh, 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 yeri, yeri. You know, so, no, it's really nice. I'm sure you ever saw the Yoruba show. You can't come out. 
a real quick one. Yeah, 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 yeah. A quick one, a quick one. I yeah. just want to say a big thank you to mm. God on behalf mm. of my king. Is where my uh, Majesty of Baba Baton de Salu is uh, celebrating his one year uh, coronation anniversary okay. on the 15th, on the 15th of next month. Okay. I might not be here before then, so I have to just give it to him. Oh, that nice. is Nice. Right. Right. Oh, well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, you, you, all of you guys are invited. Oh, well. Thank you. We'll be there. All right. Nice. Oh, but no no place is in the kitchen. No so trust me. There. <laughs> I actually forgot to mention the fact that you have a fashion. Well done, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. what I'm wearing head to toe. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Except this, though. You can. <laughs> <laughs> and your fashion Lovely. show is coming up soon. No yeah, date so, yet. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on it. You know, mm -hmm. I want to do my first fashion show. So okay. we're putting things together, boy. To be announced as soon as we. We're set, you know. All right. Yeah. Right. All right. You know, so the, the food is nice. You know, I really like it. It's healthy. This is what you eat when you don't want to eat too much. So you can yeah. call it something light. Something yeah. light. Yeah. Yeah. I also have a, a, a lounge at Elegushi Beach called Unsuku Food and Chills. Okay. So I sell food as well. So I know about good food. So oh. this is actually oh, good. Nice. Thank you so much. Nice. We'll check yeah. it out. We'll check yeah. it Thank out. Thank you so much. Nice. Uh, it's welcome. so good to have yeah. you here on the show. And yeah. to all our guests for being here, Chef Natural as well. Thank you so much. And to you, most especially watching at home, we appreciate you. We have to go now, people. Have a great day ahead. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>